Hey everyone, welcome back to another round of the Dolphins Social Impact Real Talk series. My name is Patrick Laird. I'm in my second year with the Dolphins and second year in the NFL. And uh, I'm joined by my teammate, who I'll let him introduce himself. What's up, guys? This is Byron Jones, my first year with the Dolphins, my sixth year with the National Football League. Um, we're here to have a conversation. Um, Patrick has been great with hosting this, so I'm going to let him. The Dolphins Social Impact Committee has been hosting these Real Talks, and really we just want to learn about three of our pillars. Um, we focus on education, uh, civic engagement, and economic empowerment. And for anyone that's been following along, um, early in the season we had talks on education and how we could help underserved communities, especially when it came to Wi-Fi and getting access to kids during, <clears throat> during COVID. And then second, with civic engagement, we focused on voting this year as an election, um, as an election year. And one thing we did was we partnered um, and helped restore voting rights for returning citizens in Florida. Um, so we helped pay fines and fees. And so that was a really cool, um, cool initiative we did. And then today we're going to focus on economic empowerment. And I'm joined by two people who are doing something that the Dolphin Social Impact Committee thinks can have a real impact in the South Florida community. And so we're really excited. Um, we have Dr. Jafis Hardrick here and Marshall Ames. So I'll, uh, I'll let Dr. Hardrick start off. Um, just tell us a little bit about your background, where you work, and uh, you know what, what your involvement with the program we're going to talk about today is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick and, and Byron, <clears throat> uh, as, as, as well as the entire org Dolphins organization uh, and your impact committee. Thank you so much for your commitment to transforming this community. And, and of course, my, my good friend, Marshall Ames, uh, on this call. So, so I, come, I come to, um, uh, and I'm proud to be the president of Florida Memorial University. Um, I've been in this role now, just completed two years. Prior to that, I was with Florida International University where I served as uh, vice provost for student access and success and vice president for human resources. Um, uh, prior to joining Florida International University, I was with Baylor University um, uh, as associate uh, vice provost for academic affairs, as well as the assistant vice president for human resources where I ended up getting my doctorate at Baylor. Um, so I, I come with about 25 years of higher ed experience and I, am tr I truly believe that higher educational institutions uh, must be change agents to help grow the economy, to grow and help transform uh, the lives of the citizens in any community. And so that's when, uh, again, I was so elated when talking with my friend uh, Marshall about implementing this program here at uh, Florida Memorial University. So, and I thank you guys for your commitment. Thank you guys for, for partnering with us. And so Marshall, I'll let you introduce yourself. And then um, if you can just kind of introduce the background on this program today, we're talking about the certificate program in construction trades. Sure, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Japheth. So I am Marshall Ames. I'm currently the chairman of the Lenar Foundation, which is the philanthropic charitable arm of Lenar Corporation. Lenar is one of the nation's uh, largest home builders. We started in 1954. Uh, our founder, Leonard Miller, is the Miller of the Leonard Miller School of Medicine at the University of Miami. His son, Stuart Miller, is the executive chairman. Uh, he and I have been uh, business partners. He's been my boss, been my best friend for approaching 40 years. In February, I will celebrate my 40th year with Lenar Corporation, having joined uh, as director of planning and rolled through a number of roles. I've been very honored to be able to serve for the last 12 years as the chairman of the Lenar Foundation. Lenar as a corporation donates a percentage of its after-tax profits each year to its Lenar Foundation. And then we focus on doing things to repay the communities that have made us successful. And so we focus on uh, educational programs, we focus on medical research. We're founders, uh, founding partners of the Dolphins Cancer Challenge, the, uh, the program that raises five, six million dollars a year for the Sylvester Medical uh, Cancer Center. And um, a few, for almost 20 years, my friend Stuart and I have been uh, associated with Alonzo Mourning, a little different sport, but a, but a great guy and a great philanthropist. 
And Alonzo started a youth program in Overtown almost 20 years ago. And Stuart and I have been engaged there for a very long time. And one of the things we saw was that a college degree is not the only path to success for many of our students, no matter what color, black, white, Hispanic, yellow, green, whatever. Um, we, Lenar, have a number of executives who never completed college. And so we started chatting with Florida International University with Dr. Mark Rosenberg and Dr. Jafis Hardrick about an alternative to college. Our business model, Lenar, is that while we are one of the largest builders in the country, we don't actually physically build the homes that we sell. We are responsible for them. We take care of all of the challenges with them. But our business model is that we employ local, what other companies call subcontractors, we call them trade partners. And those subcontractors are the ones who actually do the physical labor. Um, and we find that many of those subcontractors uh, are saying to us, we can't find the skilled labor to build the number of homes that you, Lenar, and your competitors are able to sell. So we went to Dr. Rosenberg and we went to Dr. Hardrick and we came up with a national certification program. Our graduates, uh, they attend a approximately 200 hour course. It's typically four hours a day, four days a week over 12 weeks. They receive a national certi certification in OSHA training, Occupational Safety Hazards Administration. And they receive an NCCER core construction skills program that certifies that they are safe to be on a job site and know the basics of all of the residential construction skills. We started at FIU a little over two years ago. Our first class was just over 20 people. Um, one of the things that the dolphins can bring to the table themselves is that part of the challenge is that no matter how good the program is, we have to get it to the eventual users. And that's where your engagement on social media, your chats, your ins inspiration can help us attract our audience. So we started at FIU uh, a little over two years ago. First class was 22 or 23 people. Our last class this spring at FIU, which was interrupted by COVID, was 173 students. Our students, the people that we attract are inner city high school graduates, inner city high school dropouts, the kids, the boys and the girls that don't, that can't even get it to a high school graduation. We work with the juvenile justice system. We work with uh, young men and women in boot camp. We work with returning citizens, uh, folks who have been in the juvenile, in the justice system and are coming back. Uh, we work with the homeless shelters for people who uh, want to learn job skills so they can be self-supportive. We work with women who are temporarily homeless because they're escaping from abusive relationships. We work with the caregivers of some of our kids who find that they're underemployed. They're making minimum wage. In, the, in Florida, the average construction worker is making $51,000, $52,000 a year. We're working with returning veterans, especially enlisted people. Um, we're working with um, anyone who's underemployed. We currently, while well, we started this program a little over two years ago at FIU, we currently have the same program, similar programs in Portland, Denver, Las Vegas, five locations in Miami. FMU will be the sixth location in Miami. We are in Fort Myers, Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville. And this coming year, 21, we'll be opening in Houston, uh, Phoenix, Atlanta, and some additional cities that were under uh, investigation. We, Lenar, have 38 operating home building divisions. It's our goal to have this program in every one of those loca locations across the country. Um, we've had uh, now, I think, our fourth or fifth cohort out of uh, Florida International University. And we have actually had two instances that I'm aware of where our graduates started their own businesses immediately upon graduation. Uh, Luis and Ivan Garcia created a company, a subcontracting company called Hard Hat Builders. And uh, at the, the previous graduation, I met a young woman, a black woman who with her sister started a commercial cleaning company. The last thing we have to do before we deliver a home is a top to bottom cleaning. 
And so there's a great need for commercial cleaning. She and her sister immediately upon graduation started their own cleaning company. So we, we know that we're making impact. We know that we're helping folks who might not otherwise have the opportunities for success. Uh, we're providing, our partnership is gonna provide completely cost-free certification. We pay for their books. We pay for bus passes if they need transportation. We pay for a meal. The courses are either 10 to two in the, in the uh, daytime with a hot lunch or they're from five to nine in the evening with a hot dinner. The, our students pay nothing other than time and attention. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get more into the, the details and the practical part of the actual program because that's you know, part of what we're here to do is promote that. Um, but before we get to that, let's just, can we just talk about, you know, the financial impact of a lifetime with these skills? You said the average construction worker makes $51,000 in the Miami. Yeah, FI, FIU, when we first started the uh, exploration of this, uh, FIU did a research program and they came back with the average construction worker in Florida makes 51,000 or more a year. Wow. So, yeah. I was, right. I was looking before this. I think I, I saw a statistic. I think the, it was either the average or the median income for an individual in the Miami area was around $36,000 a year. So, um, you know, something South like Florida, the state of Florida has a great um, hospitality industry. The challenge is hospitality doesn't pay as well as other fields. And so one of the things that's real advantage for construction is it does pay well and people can, can see a path. Most of our trade partners, most of our subcontractors started with a paintbrush or a hammer or a concrete trowel, and they built their own small business very successfully. And Patrick, as, uh, as Marshall indicated, um, <clears throat> when, we, when we did this year, uh, a couple of years ago, I, I mean, the demand, um, nothing has changed. There, there is still a significant shortage of great talent. And, and um, unfortunately, it, when it comes to African-Americans or the African diaspora, uh, those numbers uh, that, I mean, they are extremely small uh, in terms of that particular population uh, being in the construction industry or even coming out creating their own businesses. And so, so I, to me, I've seen this program literally have such a transformational impact on lives, man. And, and as Marshall indicated, college is not for everyone. And, and, and you don't have to have a college degree in order to have good skills to create economic wealth for you and your families. And that's what we're trying to do. And it's through these certificate type programs, one that we meet industry demands, and then we wet the, wet the appetite of the participants to begin to even want more. And, and, and that's what we're looking forward to seeing this program not only help you get employed upon completing the program, but at some point get you to a point where you wanna create your own, your own business. Not and go out and, and employ other people because the more you do that, the greater the economic impact on the greater community. Nat Moore tells a wonderful story about one of his favorite uncles who um, I think he may have finished high school. I'm not even sure that he did. But for many, many, many years, he has uh, been in the construction trades business, has his own company, has achieved considerable success, and uh, is sort of a, a role model for what we're trying to do, for what we actually are doing. Yeah, so, so obviously we want to expand this program to FMU. So Dr. J, this question is for you. So for, for people who don't know much about the university, can you please explain a little bit about what you guys do and what you guys uh, would like to see happen in the future? Sure, Byron, thank you so much. Um, what, one of the things, Florida Memorial is, uh, is a historical black university here in, uh, uh, we're the fourth in the state of Florida uh, among HBCUs, but the only one here in South Florida. The university has been around for 141 years, providing a quality education to uh, so many deserving students who would not otherwise get an opportunity. And many a times uh, we, we bring students in here, believe it or not, um, Byron and, and Patrick, many of these students, they come in uh, with very high GPAs uh, out of high school, but they come in not having the self-assurance, if you will, that they can succeed. And one of the things that we do, because we are a small liberal arts institution, 
we have we have faculty and staff who are dedicated committed to helping them build the uh, again the confidence and i'm telling you probably about after the first year you begin to see these students really uh take off and begin to soar and realize that they they can accomplish whatever they set their minds to and dis discipline themselves to do this university has produced many great doctors lawyers judges aviators um uh, uh educators uh, you name it, uh, come out of this university, but many people don't know about it simply because we've not done a good job, uh, gentlemen, of really shaping our narrative and letting people know. But it is truly a phenomenal university. Um, we used to be in, um, in St. Augustine. You may not know anything about this history, but it comes back to the very initiatives you're talking about. So, uh, but we've been in, in, in uh, Miami Gardens for 53 years. So 53 years ago, they left St. Augustine because the Klan went in one night and shot the place up. People literally ran for their lives. And this is how they ended up here in, uh, in Miami Gardens. And, uh, and really began having an economic impact every since. But for me, this university has so much potential and I really feel, as I indicated earlier, that we have a fundamental responsibility to help transform and impact people's lives. We have to be economic drivers. We have to be problem solvers um, to eradicate many of the challenges and barriers that prevent people from succeeding in life. And we know education, economics are two of those critical uh, barriers that we must remove and realize that, listen, there is enough money for all of us to be able to enjoy in this life. And it's about learning how to work together. Uh, and it's not about race, but removing that as a barrier and working collaborative to make a better community uh, is, is my perspective. Marshall mentioned some of the people that you target for this, this uh, program. What type of outreach are you guys doing currently um, I know we're having this conversation now, trying to wait, raise awareness, but what, other, what types of outreach are you guys doing? And where, where do you think the Dolphins can step in and help uh, you know, augment that, that outreach? Well, as Jafis um, could, could confirm, our, our biggest challenge when we started the program at FIU was finding our students. Um, you know, when you're dealing with homeless shelters, when you're dealing with high school dropouts, when you're dealing with kids coming out of the juvenile justice system, it's, it's finding them. And... Um, Fortunately, our primary partner, FIU, is very willing to share its uh, knowledge and the things that it has discovered. Japhis is still well-regarded and well-loved at FIU, and I'm sure he will be working with, with the folks at FIU. Um, social outreach is a real challenge, and that's where I think Japhis and I would agree that the Dolphins themselves, you know, some some uh, Facebook campaigns, some Instagram campaigns, some things that, uh, you know, reaching out to, uh, to the families of fans uh, of the Dolphins and, and suggesting to, you know, someone who's just dropped out of high school, hey, wait a second, maybe there's, maybe there's an alternative for you to just hanging out on the corner. Uh, so I, I think, and I'll leave this to Jafis, who has the experience from both FIU and, and will be doing the program here, um, I think a social outreach program by the players themselves can be very, very effective in helping us find our constituents. And, and, and I concur with you, uh, Marshall, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so in addition to us also making sure that we are targeting the various uh, organizations that, that uh, Marshall mentioned, I think it would be advantageous for you and your organization to really talk about the program, talk about the partnership with uh, Florida Memorial uh, University. And that is really going to make people say, I, I need to be a part of it. And particularly when they know that you're talking about two critical organizations um, in this community that are committed to the economic transformation of people's lives and helping to um, eradicate the gaps, if you will, or to close the economic gaps and make a difference. I think that's going to cause so many of these people, uh, students, the residents uh, in this community. And when you think about Florida, uh, Miami Gardens and Opalaka, 
two, two of the most crime ridden areas um, uh, in, 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 the, in the county. But you know what? I'm, I'm confident that working collaboratively, we can also remove some of those barriers as well because all people are looking for are just uh, uh, opportunities to do better. And I think we can really make a difference here, uh, which is why I'm so excited about it, I, I tell you. And as Marshall said, I've seen it. I've seen the impact. And not only even in this program, but we're rolling out other uh, similar programs as well. But I can tell you this one, it will be a game changer. For the moment, the residential construction industry is so challenged with finding qualified workers. Right. That, oh, so at the end of the graduation, what we do in all of the communities we're in is we use our association, our relationship with the local builders association and the local builders association then has a job fair. And most of their members are not the home builders of Lennar. They're the subcontractors, the trade partners that are looking for workers. Right. So we, at, at the end of every graduation, we have a job fair. There are two builders associations in Miami, the South Florida Builders Association and the Latin Builders Association. They come, they host the job fair. We bring our graduates and we make the introduction and they get interviewed and hired. We are running about an 80% graduation rate of our constituents and we're running about an 85% higher rate. So we, we wish it were 100%. It's, it's, that's just perhaps not ultimately achievable, but 80 and 85 is doing pretty darn well. Absolutely. And the other thing that your players at your impact committee is doing is you're bootstrapping JFIS and FMU because we have found that Florida International University and our other educational partners, once they get a track record of showing graduates and hirings, there are millions of dollars of job skills training program available from the state and from the federal. So you are enabling FMU to get into the game of providing construction skills training and it can become self-sufficient. Of course, you may choose to continue as we do, but we are helping FMU expand its footprint and its reach on the local community. I grew up in Opelika and it wasn't a great place when I grew up there many years ago. It was an economically challenged place. We can have effect on that. We together collectively can change lives. That's right. I, mean, I think it's a good time to, to mention that the Dolphins are making a two year commitment to this program with FMU. So we're really excited about that. Um, as you said, you, you already have some great numbers, you know, the 85% higher rate. That's obviously we wanted to, you know, you wanted to get higher, but that already that's a pretty good number. And so I'm excited to see what the Dolphins can do and what FMU can do over the next two years. And then hopefully it can continue beyond that. Um, so I'd like to go back to just the, the timeline of the program and basically just the practical part of it. So let's say someone's listening now or someone's listening and they have a family member or a friend or a cousin that they think is a great candidate for this program, where do they start? Where do they look to sign up? And then what do they expect to see from when they start the program, how long it goes until they start working in a construction trade? So it, it is a, it is um, a Patrick and, and Byron, it's a, it's a 12 week program as uh, Marshall um, uh, uh, indicated. So we will start taking applications on uh, the 18th of January. Uh, and then we will actually admit our, our first cohort on February the 5th and the program will actually start on February the 22nd and, and conclude on May the 14th. That will be our first cohort. So we're looking at running two cohorts uh, each academic year. And, uh, but if we continue to, if it grows at the, the rate that we're anticipating, we may look at then uh, including one for the summer. But right now we're going to do the first cohort um, and then take about a month or so and evaluate it. And then we'll start the, the second cohort in, in September. That's, this is where a program coordinator is going to be so critical because this person will be working with, uh, uh, again, your organization, many others out in the community building until we are able to get out face to face, but just doing the, 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 the virtual outreaches uh, with the veteran administration, churches, and so many different organizations out there 
um, uh, basically promoting the program. So we will have all this information uh, on our website. So people, all they have to do is actually go to Florida Memorial uh, and that's fmuniv.edu. Okay, fmuniv.edu, and they will be able to literally click and, and, and read more details about the program. So it's very simple. And I think what Marshall, Marshall indicated earlier, gentlemen, that this, what, what you're doing is affording individuals to be able to be in this program at no cost, other than time commitment and, and dedication. And uh, what more can you ask for? We, we, we cover your meals while you're here. We help to make sure you, you get to and from where you need to be. And not only that, but literally working to help place you probably even before you graduate, okay? Uh -huh. That's the level of commitment. And then you, then you get an opportunity to get tools to be able to start out with. I mean, I just think that is just, uh, it's such a tremendous opportunity uh, for, for individuals in this community. Yeah, I think the no cost thing's awesome. Do you think it's possible for someone to continue working or if they found a job, maybe they are working in the service industry, can they do this program at the same time? Are you guys flexible, stuff like that? And, and, that, and that we are. Uh, and go ahead, Marshall, because yeah, go ahead. What, so I, I don't know where Jafis is gonna take the program at FMU, but I know that with his, with his inspiration at FIU, uh, FIU now runs day classes and evening classes. They run classes from 10 to two for people that are working in the evenings, and they're running classes from five to nine for people that are working during the days. So yes, we are, we are finding that there are folks who can work full time and still take advantage of the program. Um, and a number of our graduates are folks who are currently underemployed, right. sometimes in the hospitality industry, which is a great industry, but average wages of eight, $9 an hour versus 14, 15, $16 an hour in the uh, construction trade program. So yes, absolutely. And one of the things that we love finding is that in, uh, in Overtown, we're finding that a number of the care drivers, caregivers, the, the mothers, the grandmothers, the, the, you know, the, the parents of the kids that we've recruited from the high school and recruited from the boot camps, the caregivers are joining the educational program too because they want to make a higher living. And so we're very pleased. That was an unintended uh, consequence that we've been very pleased about. So, so tell me this, what do you say to the person that's kind of on the fence that says, okay, maybe I don't have a high school degree or maybe I had a criminal history in the past. What do you say to that person to encourage them to sign up for this program? Well, one, one is that, listen, every, every people make, make choices. Sometimes those choices uh, can have devastating consequences. But anytime I think you are afforded an opportunity at a second chance, to re reinvent yourself, um, uh, this, these are opportunities where it comes back to your decision. And this is where a program like this that we are creating, uh, it, it's going to allow people, regardless of your criminal background, it's going to allow you the opportunity to reinvent yourself and start afresh, start a new opportunity, a new career, because you don't have to allow your past to basically determine or limit your future. That's all about you. But you can be rest assured that you have people here who are dedicated to helping you succeed in life and giving you those second opportunities and third opportunities. I think we also at FIU and with some of our other educational partners, we are able to introduce a candidate to someone who's been through the program, who's been trained, who's been certified, who's been hired, and is now seeing themselves be, you know, having multiple opportunities in front of them. And so, sometimes I think in, in situations, Byron, back, going back to your question, I think sometimes uh, in situations like that, people start feeling guilty. Can I get another opportunity? Will people really be uh, as committed? And I think in this program, they're going to find people who are truly dedicated to them and dedicated to their success and really helping them realize you can be whatever you want to be in, in life, man. It just requires discipline. And sometimes it just requires people giving you uh, a little help, if you will, and pushing you, if you will, uh, into your purpose. And so all of that comes back to many a times choices. And I think all of us on this call, we've been blessed 
And that's why we're so committed to trying to create opportunities for others to, to be able to um, get better economic positions for themselves and their families as well. In a sort of a, just kind of a coincidence, my, my good friend and boss, uh, Stuart Muller and I were having dinner one evening uh, with uh, what, what happened to be, turns out to be a juvenile justice judge, uh, Judge Ellen Venzer. And we started chatting about this program and she became so excited. She said, oh my God, this is such a wonderful, I, it breaks my heart when I see the same 15, 16, 17 year old in front of me for you know three times in a row. And so she has introduced us to the juvenile justice system in Dade County. And we are now with their full cooperation recruiting from teenagers that are in you know the juvenile justice system. Yeah, I was gonna ask, do you guys have any specific stories maybe of someone that had a troubled past or made some decisions when they're young um, that have gone through this program and have been able, been able to successfully complete it and find a job? I, I'm sure we do. Um, in part because of the privacy laws, I'm not sure that I can share without their, without their approval, uh, you know, things. Uh, I know that Luis and Ivan wouldn't mind our, our sharing their story. Um, but I, I think that I, I know from, I, I have been to every one of the graduations uh, of FIU's cohorts. And um, I, I, I see people with tears in their eyes when they get their graduate. We do a formal graduation. We, at FIU, Jafis is gonna do whatever he chooses to do, but we do a formal it would be the same. It would be the same model. And Dr. Mark Rosenberg, the president of FIU has been at most, if not all of them. And uh, when, when Mark and I give them their you know, graduation ceremony, I look at people, they, they have tears in their eyes because they feel like they have a path open to them that they didn't have before. And I, I am such a blubbering fool. I, I'm usually crying at each one of the things myself. <laughs> but um, it, I, we are changing lives. We will change lives together, I promise you. And, I, and Marcia, if you, don't, if you don't mind my saying, um, uh, uh, again, in, in terms of uh, just, um, I, I think your level of commitment, I, I, re I remember when, when um, I originally talked to you about this program, uh, what, two years ago, and, and mentioned to Marshall um, the vision that I had and the, and the type of individuals we were going after um, in Overtown and getting these young men out of the, the, the juvenile system and, and out of the correctional system and put them on a better path. Uh, Marshall even started crying. He was like, oh my God, that, because that's, that's his heart. And, 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 and it's, it's proven to be a success. So uh, Marshall, let me just say, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate you and your commitment. Uh, and most importantly, the Dolphins for uh, believing in us to continue to have a greater impact and just expand, if you will, um, opportunities for success. Thank you. It's it's not just a me thing. It's it's the whole Lenore organization. It's the board of directors that approve a percentage of our profits to the foundation. It's my fellow executives who help us uh, to support this program. And we thank you, Jafis. You were very instrumental in helping us create the, the pioneer of this program at FIU that we've now taken to 10 or 12 different cities across the country and we'll ultimately have in all 38 cities where we do business. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible to hear you guys talk about the program and its potential impact because, you know, even if you have a small cohort of 20 people, that's 20 families you're potentially impacting, yes. right? Yes. And then so that's hundreds of people. And then over a lifetime, those people are having successful, um, they're su having a successful career and a positive impact in their community. So impacting really thousands of lives with just, um, touching on 20 people in one semester or one, you know, one certificate program. Right. Um, and then hopefully over two years, that's just going to continue to multiply. Uh, I, I'm really excited to see the results. Um, is there, is there anything else that you guys want to share about the program that you don't think we touched on today that you think would be relevant for people to hear about, um, or anything more generally about the impact that something like this program can have? Well, I think your questions, uh, have been very probing and very, uh, very detailed. So I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that, uh, that we would add to it. Um, Jafis? No, I, and, and you're absolutely right, Marshall. And, and, and I think if there is any other thing that I would um, um, say is that I think this is also going to send a powerful message to, to the greater community about our collaboration 
and the Dolphins organizations, the players and, and, and other organizations in this community are committed to helping to create economic success for, for everyone who wants it um, in, in this community. And, and listen, I think we all know there is no substitute for hard work, but uh, the majority of the people are just looking for an opportunity. Uh, that, that's all they want. They don't want handouts uh, or anything of that nature. They just want give me an opportunity to better myself and to better my family. And I just think this is going to be powerful and send a powerful message in this community about, uh, again, your commitment to the success uh, of this community. Opportunity is a word that pops up a lot in our, our conversations with the Dolphins Social Impact Committee. And so that's, that's a big thing of what we want to provide. Um, so I, you know, I've taken a couple notes from today in the conversation. I've learned a lot. Uh, I think the social outreach program, I think that's something that we need to definitely start figuring out in the next couple of weeks. Um, for people listening, January 18th, I believe you guys said is the deadline to apply. Yes, we will start uh, accepting applications January 18th, but it, we won't limit it to then. Uh, okay. But we will select the first cohort uh, the first week in February. Okay. Yeah, so we'll start to... Let's start promoting around that time, January 18th, or leading up to it, and um, we'll start, you know, getting other players involved and people in the community, fans of the Dolphins. Um, I think it'd be awesome if we get some Dolphins fans in this program. I commit to reach out to Caleb and Jason after the holidays when we're all back uh, uh, together again and talk about how we might invite the players themselves to engage in the recruitment uh, of this of the, of the students, the participants at FMU, um, and. I think you all will get some personal satisfaction out of it and you will help Jafus grow his program even faster than it would otherwise. So this question is really for both of you guys. So when an individual j joins the, the program, what actual trades can they pick up? Is it HVAC, is it roofing, is it flooring? Can you discuss some of the, the trades that these people can, can actually get? So, so yes, um, uh, great question, Byron. Uh, one as coming out of this and as a part of the uh, NCCER's curriculum, uh, again, our focus in this program initially is definitely going to be around plumbing, uh, HVAC, and electrical. Uh, but one of the good things about being in a program uh, like this and then getting exposed in the industry, they can always go back and learn uh, other skills um, uh, as it relates to the construction industry. So it really is, a, it's, it's, it's a door, it's a window of opportunity uh, where you can then continue to build on uh, on, on your skills and, uh, and, and get even advanced uh, certificates and, and, and degrees, if you will, uh, in the construction industry. If I may, uh, I think JFIS is very wise to start with a more limited selection as we did at FIU. FIU today has more than just those three programs. Right. It has carpentry, it has block masonry, it has concrete placement, it has uh, a number of other skills that are available. And, and as Jafis says, this is, this is an entree. This is a door opener. Um, you, you learn the basic OSHA safety and the basics of, of, of construction, you know, how to use the tape measure, how to, how, to, how to be on a job site, how to, there's social skills uh, training, how to disagree, how to accept criticism, how to give criticism. But uh, hopefully Jafis's program at FMU, like some of our other educational partners will expand to include many more than those three very desirable trades, ultimately. Right, and, and, and one, of, one of the other things uh, I would like to say, um, as a part of the program that we will be offering here, not only will the participants or students just come in and learn uh, what they're supposed to do on the construction site, but we're also going to be talking with them about, uh, again, those critical um, uh, social skills, if you will, um, like communication, problem solving, working as a team, and, 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 and so on and so forth, right? Because we know those things, you may have some great skills that would get you on a job, but man, if your social skills are terrible um, and you don't know how to work in a team, you're not going to be with the company very long. So we are going to be, make sure that we're working with them to gain and understand those critical core skills 
that will help them be successful anywhere they go in life. So it's really like a holistic approach. Like That's correct. Any construction training. It's really That's correct. It, career training. As I understand it at FIU, it even goes down to what are the appropriate things to talk about and joke about on a job site? Absolutely. You know, they, it's one thing when you're having a beer with your buddies. It's another thing when you're in a multicultural environment with different people. Uh, what, what is the appropriate conduct on a job site? Right. And we train, not we, our educational partners train that. We endorse that. Well, sounds like the program kind of grows organically in terms of, okay, you got to start with the limited but important three sectors. And then from there, as more people learn about it and they come back to you and want to grow and expand in their education, then you guys expand as a program and kind of grow from there. So what we've seen at FIU, which is to me fascinating, is that we've seen people, men and women, and 40% of our students at FIU have been women, by the way. It's not just men. Uh, we have seen students go through the program, get a, get a job, start working, and then come back to FIU part-time to take business courses because they want to own their own business, but they need to learn what is accounting? How do I balance a checkbook? How do I keep books? How do I keep records? So FIU is very pleased to find that they're getting often evening students coming back to take um, business courses to enable them to be able to run their own business. We think that's wonderful. We think that's just outstanding. That's awesome. Very exciting. 